Misconceptions that the international media is spreading against Islam, but we should also try and present the correct teachings of Islam. And we Muslims, we should do dawah to the media. The media. country which has the maximum number of English speaking people it is USA 350 million people in USA they speak English number two which country is it is it UK it's not UK it's a country India 125 to 200 million people in India they speak English it is a second language in our country and number three is UK 60 million people in UK they speak English you know why I'm telling you this because there are two magazines in USA. There are two organizations by the name of ISNA and ICNA. Islamic Society of North America and Islamic Circle of North America. And these two organizations, the ISNA, it produces a magazine by the name of The Horizons. And ICNA, it produces another magazine by the name of The Message. So both these magazines put together, how many copies do they print? Few years back, it was 50,000 per month. Now it may have increased. It may have become 60, 70, 80,000. That's it. And we have the example of the Islamic Voice magazine, the Indian magazine, which is monthly published. How many copies do they print? Maximum 10 to 15,000 per month. When the Christian missionaries, they print, they print in large numbers. And recently when I was in Nigeria, when I was coming back from the airport to the hotel, I saw so many posters so-and-so chapel, so-and-so church, singing going on there in the morning. I thought this is a Christian country, not even a single Islamic poster. These Christian missionaries, when they do dawah, when they spread Christianity, they do it in a big amount. And I would like to give you an example. Here I have a copy of a magazine by the name of Watchtower. How many copies do they print? Can you guess how many copies do they print? Can you guess? How much? One lakh, brother saying one lakh. Can you guess? You know how many copies do they print? Fortnightly they print 37.1 million copies. That means monthly they print 74.2 million copies. Watched our magazine. And in how many languages? Five, ten. 20, 30, in no less than 169 languages. And the same organization, the Jehovah's Witnesses, it prints another magazine by the name Awake. And how many copies do they print? They print no less than 35.7 million copies per month. And in no less than 81 languages. So both these magazines put together, the Awake and the Watchtower. 35.7 million plus 74.2 million. It equals to 110 million copies. And this was four and a half years back. What is the present in 2013? You know, the Watchtower magazine, they print 45 million copies fortnightly. That means 90 million copies per month. And the Awake magazine, they print 43.7 million copies per month. So the Awake and the Watchtower magazine put together 43.7 million plus 90 million, it equals to 133 million copies. And this Watchtower magazine, it is printed in no less than 210 languages. And the Awake magazine, it is printed in no less than 99 languages. 
So these Christian missionaries, they are printing in large numbers. We Muslims, leave aside print. We can't even think of printing in such large quantities. And unfortunately, we Muslims, we are very poor. We are miskeen when it comes to the media. What we print, one color job, two color job, Islamic voice. And what we Muslims, we print 80,000, 100,000 peanuts. Unfortunately, we Muslims, we are very backward as far as media is concerned. Wallah, we are very backward as far as media is concerned. And Alhamdulillah, the Islamic Research Foundation it has taken the initiative to print books. The Quran and Modern Science, the concept of God in major world religions, the misconceptions about Islam. All these books, they are printed. Maybe it may have reached a million copies, but yet it is peanuts as compared to the Christian missionaries. And we have the example of Jimmy Swaggart. You might have heard the person Jimmy Swaggart. He was the greatest tele-evangelist of his time. How much was his budget? His annual budget was $400 million. He required a million dollars a day to keep his head above water. I doubt how many Muslim organizations, how many Islamic organizations have a million dollar monthly budget. I doubt, I don't know of any. And we have the example of Sheikh Ahmad Didar. He was only educated till sixth grade. Yet, he took the entire Christian dumb single-handedly. Our one Sheikh Ahmad Didat was sufficient for the entire Christianity. Unfortunately, the budget that he had, it was very small. And they had special organizations. They had full wings doing research on Sheikh Ahmad Didat. How to defeat him, how to attack him. Today, the most famous human being in the world is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is not only said by Muslims, but even by many of the non-Muslims. Michael H. Hart, he has written a book, The Hundred Most Influential Human Beings. And he gives Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the number one position. Michael H. Hart, he was not a Muslim. Yet he gave Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the number one position. If you look at the lifestyle of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, the early years of prophethood, there were only five people who accepted Islam. His wife, Hazrat Khatija and Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Ali and a few other companions. There were no enemies. Later on, 10 people accepted Islam, maybe one enemy. 100 people accepted Islam, maybe a few hundred enemies. 1,000 people accepted Islam, maybe a few thousand enemies. So as the number of people accepted Islam increased, even the enemies kept on increasing. So when a person becomes famous, the more he becomes famous, even the number of enemies increases. And even the percentage of the number of enemies, it increases. And today in the world, there are 1.7 billion Muslims. And there are so many enemies against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the most famous human being in the world today. Therefore, the maximum books written against any human being, it is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The maximum material on the internet against any human being, it is against Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The maximum movies made against any human being, it is against Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The more the person gets famous, the number of enemies keeps increasing. And these Christian missionaries, they are trained, they have got special manuals on how to do dawah to the non-Christians. And they have a manual by the name of Operation World, which shows you how to do dawah in different parts of the world, whether it be in India, whether it be in Pakistan, whether it be in UK, whether it be in USA, whether it be in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, be careful, it's very difficult to do dawah. So these Christian missionaries, they have full-time people dedicated to do dawah. How many full-time da'is do we have? Like how we have full-time doctors, full-time engineers. Similarly, these Christian missionaries, they have full-time da'is conveying the message of Christianity. And unfortunately, we Muslims, we are very backward as far as dawah using the media is concerned. And today research tells us that when a person gives a public talk, the matter that he speaks carries only 7% weightage. Whereas 93% it is the presentation skills. The way you modulate your voice, the eye to eye contact, the gestures, the distance from the microphone, all this consists of 93%. Whereas 7% it is only the matter. 93% it consists of the presentation skills. And the Islamic International School and the Islamic Research Foundation have taken the initiative to conduct dawah training programs. The DTP, 
which shows the different techniques of how to do dawa. And the different techniques of how to do dawa, dawa using the video, dawa using the audio, the print media, journalism, all these are different techniques. And alhamdulillah, the peace conference in Mumbai, it is the largest Islamic conference in the world. Largest Islamic peace conference in terms of number of people attending and also in terms of technology being used. There are no less than 30 different speakers coming from all over the world, whether it be from UK, whether it be from USA, whether it be from Canada, whether it be from Saudi Arabia, from UAE, from different parts of the world. Bombay is being blessed with the stalwarts of Islam. And Alhamdulillah, there are no less than 35 cameras. Today, Alhamdulillah, Peace TV Network, it is the largest watch Islamic channel in the world. It is not only the largest watch Islamic channel in the world, it is also the largest watch religious channel in the world, covering 6 billion people. In potential viewers, Peace TV is close to 1.5 billion. In actual viewership, it is more than 100 million. The Christian missionaries, they have big budgets, but the difference is that we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our side. Today, satellite television, it is the largest, it is the biggest market in the world. And today in the world, there are 35,000 TV stations on which there are no less than 25,000 channels covering 80% of the population, covering 6 billion people. And most of it, we have to agree, it is haram. Either music, either dance, either indecency, either obscenity, most of it, it is haram. How many halal channels do we have? And even among the Islamic channels, most of them, they either consist of music, either consist of women coming on it without hijab for long time speeches. How many halal channels do we have? Amal Peace TV. Islamic International School presents The Stars of Future. The Dais of Future. Today, I'll be talking about Dawatul Islam, an invitation toward Islam. Watch Faisal Kokan, Ismail Khan, Zayed Sheikh, Subaiba Suparibala, Amreen Sheikh, Zainab Faruqi, Fatima Munshi, and Farid Knight. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the world of future generation. Next on Peace TV. If we analyze, today in the world, there are 100 Islamic channels. Out of which, 75 of the channels, they are Arabic channels. Number two is Urdu. 10 channels in Urdu. Number three is English. Maybe three channels in English. A few localized channels, a couple of channels in Malay, one channel in Bangla, a couple of Persian channels. Overall, 100 Islamic channels. You know in USA alone, there are no less than 2,000 TV stations, out of which only 100 belong to Christian missionaries. This is in USA alone. If we count UK and the entire world, there are several hundred Christian missionary channels in several languages of the world. We Muslims, we are very backward as far as media is concerned. And as I mentioned earlier, the IT information technology, it is advancing very fast and is overtaking all the other medias. The media it is maligning Islam through the internet. We Muslims, we need to use this internet to convey the message of Islam and the IT information technology. Soon it will overtake even the satellite television channels. So we Muslims, we should be well equipped in this IT information technology. And Alhamdulillah, recently the Peace Mobile has been launched. It is the first Islamic mobile in the world. And it consists of 80 hours of Islamic lectures. And it also consists of no less than 200 Islamic ringtones. Most of the ringtones we hear on the mobile, they consist of music. Music is haram. So it consists of 200 Islamic ringtones. And a 32 GB SD card is included with 4 GB internal memory and there's a 5 megapixel camera and a dual core processor. In conclusion, I would like to mention a misconception. 
The media says that Islam was spread by the sword. The best reply to the misconception that Islam was spread by the sword is given by the famous historian Delasio O'Leary in his book Islam at the Crossroads on page number 8. He says that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword is the most fantastically absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. I would like to repeat the statement Delasi O'Leary in his book Islam at the Crossroad on page number 8 he says that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world forcing Islam at the point of the sword is the most fantastic absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. We Muslims we ruled Spain for 800 years we didn't do our job later on the Christian crusaders came and they wiped out the Muslims there was not a single Muslim who could openly give the adhan that is a call for prayer. We Muslims, we were the lords of Arabia for 1400 years. For a few years the French came, for a few years the British came. Yet overall we Muslims, we were the lords of Arabia for 1400 years. If we wanted, we could have converted each and every non-Muslim at the point of the sword. We didn't do it. Today in Arabia, there are 10 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians. These 10 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was not spread by the sword. We Muslims, we rule India for a thousand years. India today has more than 80% non-Muslims. If we wanted, we could have converted each and every non-Muslim at the point of the sword. We didn't do it. These 80% non-Muslim Indians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was not spread by the sword. Which Muslim army went to Indonesia which had maximum number of Muslims? Which Muslim army went to Malaysia which had more than 50% Muslims? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? Which sword? The reply is given by Thomas Carlyle in his book Heroes and Hero Worship. And he makes Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the number one hero. And he says that the sword indeed, but where will you get your sword? Every new idea at the beginning originates in the mind of one. One man against the whole world that he will pick up his sword and propagate it. You must take your sword and propagate it. Thomas Carlyle is talking about the sword of intellect, the sword of reasoning. Even if we had the sword of steel, we could not use it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nahal chapter number 16 verse number 125, Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal mawizat al hasana wajad al humbilatihi ahsan. Invite all the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. And there was an article published in the Reader's Digest, Almanac, Yearbook 1984. And it was reprinted in the Plain Truth magazine, which showed the statistics of the increase of the major world religions in the span of 50 years from 1934 to 1984. And number one religion was Islam, which increased by 235%. Christianity, only 47%. Which war took place between 1934 to 1984, which forced millions of people to accept Islam. Which war? Today, the fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. Who is forcing these American and European people to accept Islam? Which sword? The media says that Islam subjugates the women. You know out of the people accepting Islam, two-thirds of them are women. Who is forcing these American and European women to accept Islam? And the media says that war on terror, war for peace. It is not war for peace, it is war on peace. It is war on the religion of peace. It is war on Islam. And after 9-11, in a span of 10 months alone, 34,000 Americans accepted Islam. According to Yuan Redley, in the span of nine months alone, 22,000 Europeans accepted Islam. How much ever they're trying to suppress Islam, Islam is growing at a phenomenal rate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 54, wa makaru wa makar Allah, wallahu khayrul makirin. They plan and plot. Allah too plans. And Allah is the best of planners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us in no less than three different places. In Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 33, Surah Fatah chapter number 48 verse number 28, and Surah Saf chapter number 61 verse number 9, Huwa alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen il haq li yudhirahu ala deen kulli. It is Allah who has sent down his messenger with the religion of truth so that it will supersede over all the other religions, over all the other isms, whether it be Christianism, 
Judaism, Hinduism, secularism, socialism, communism, atheism, any ism. Islam is destined to supersede them all, master them all, fully overcome them all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walau karih al mushrikun how much ever the mushriks they did not like it. And with a different ending in Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 28. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا And enough is Allah as a witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you and me, the rubbish that we are, to make his deen prevail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity to make hair while the sun is shining. He is giving us an opportunity to do a prophet's job and to earn a prophet's reward. And I would request the brothers and sisters out here that to use technology, use the IT information technology, use internet, use Facebook, use WhatsApp, Use your websites, use blogs to convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Isra chapter number 17, verse number 81, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا When truth is hurled against falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. I would like to end my talk with a quotation of Dr. Adam Pearson. Dr. Adam Pearson rightly says that people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs. They fail to realize that the Islamic bomb, the bomb of the religion of peace, has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Jazakallah, Brother Farik, for that timely reminder. Indeed, it was an excellent presentation. In conclusion, I firstly thank Allah for this spectacular morning. I thank you all for being such an encouraging and a fantastic audience, Alhamdulillah. But before we conclude this program today, with hopes and aspirations of a promising generation, we resolve with a very strong faith in Allah, immense determination and deep love for Islam that inshaAllah with Allah's help, we will break the barriers of sects we will break the barriers of race. We will break the barriers of color, insha'Allah. We have a crystal clear vision that Allah will fulfill our dreams with sincere repentance, unflinching faith, and deep introspection. We humbly ask Allah, may Allah revive the lost honor of the Ummah, and may we be at the front lines of that revival. The Ummah today is stone and bleeding, its parts estranged from each other, grappling in the crisis of division and sectarianism, disunity and turmoil. We have strayed far away from the true purpose of our creation and have sidetracked from the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, peace be upon him, favoring the fleeting life of this world over the everlasting one to come in the hereafter. As Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 111, Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'mineen anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al jannah. Indeed, Allah has purchased from the believers their lives as well as their wealth, for theirs in return is the garden of paradise. We, the promising generation, will change the scenario. We will revolutionize the state and bring about a glaring transformation, insha'Allah. And I'm sure that this is not just our dream. There are many others who share it with us and who will join us not only to realize it but to attain and achieve it, insha'Allah. It is with deep sense of gratitude that I, on behalf of Islamic International School, take the privilege on thanking Dr. Zakir Naik for pioneering such a wonderful platform for the young budding da'is of trendsetters to exhibit their talent, learn, spread the message and seek Allah's pleasure. I also thank the diligent Islamic Research Foundation research team and the enthusiastic Islamic International School staff members for their efforts. May Allah accept all our efforts and may He shower His choicest blessings upon us and help us in organizing many more events like these and reach millions through Peace TV, inshaAllah. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Seeds on cause of weather.